The following educational experiment is brought to you by Knowledge. Knowledge! Guys, I'm just sitting here in my office enjoying some uh, bow time. Hey. And I looked back at the video where I did the vacuum experiment last week, and there was a lot of comments on it, a whole lot of comments, including comments from Jim Bergman from Measure Quick. And he said that I actually wasn't in leak test mode. I was in decay mode or I hit the wrong button or something like that. And that does sound like me because I tend to do stuff wrong. So what I'm going to do this week is do it all right. We're going to redo the experiment in a little bit more abbreviated fashion. And I'm going to show you what I found out, which was alarming. If you thought last week was alarming, this week is going to be off the charts. I redid the test. I let the vacuum pull down extremely low. I just left it there for like an hour and a half. I wanted to make sure that coil was totally dehydrated because I'm pretty sure that on the first test, it wasn't. And that played a part in what happened. So I'm going to pull it down as far as I can take it in about an hour and a half. It was like an hour, hour and a half. And then we're going to do a leak test, not a decay test. I think you're going to be pretty alarmed about what happened. So we got some feedback on the vacuum test. And one of the things that we got was some information from MeasureQuick, a.k.a. Jim Bergman, about how we weren't in actual leak test mode. So we're going to check it in leak test mode now to see what the difference is, see if we can't tell a difference and identify this as a leak, as opposed to just letting it sit there for a while and not going up to 500, and we say the system's good. So we're going to start it, we're going to pull it down back to 150 microns, and we're going to try this one more time. The first part of the vacuum test kind of plays out the exact same way, except I left it a little bit longer so it would go to a little bit lower depth. Instead of stopping at 150 microns, I went ahead past that. I left it for a while, I actually left and came back after picking up my son, just to make sure we had a very dehydrated coil in the perfect environment to test this coil, which leaks in two spots. My contention is that the leaks are so small that it will pass the vacuum test. On the previous test that we did last week, it was a little bit unclear because we went up to 500 microns and we stayed there. But I'm thinking that it was because the coil wasn't completely dehydrated and I didn't leave the vacuum pump running long enough. So that's what we're going to test here. I'm going to valve off and select leak test and we're going to watch what happens. Guys, one of the things that was brought up in the comments after the first video came out was the fact that the leak test scale is different than a regular vacuum scale, meaning that the graphs are different. The term logarithmic was brought up and then linear. So I did some investigating because I wanted to make sure I totally understood what was going on. And the logarithmic scale is a good example of that because I looked it up on the Khan Academy. It's a great website. You have certain scales in a line. Let's say there's five equal pieces. And a linear scale will be like one, two, three, four, five. Equal each mark. A logarithmic scale will be like like a power of 10 or a power of five or something like that. So it's not equal. It'll be like one, five, 25, 125, and on and on and on. That way you can see this graph on one screen. Jim actually said it. If you had a linear scale for the whole thing, you'd have to have a tablet that was a mile tall or something like that. Because if you used equal measure all the way up to 760,000 microns, which is atmosphere, you wouldn't be able to see it on the screen. The screen would be so big. So they use a logarithmic scale. This is very confusing sounding. I hope you guys understood this. It took me a while to get it myself. So we'll go over it again if we need to. Look it up online. That's what I did. <laughs> I Googled it. But once you get into leak test mode, it's a linear scale, so you can see the characteristics of the line easier. So that was true. That was definitely true. You could zoom in and check it out. And it was really interesting to see how the line curved more so than I thought it would. And what's even more interesting is the rate of leakage. So we're going to look at the scale right now, and then we're going to talk a little bit at the end. It 
here's the deal. This whole test is at high speed. I mean, I've accelerated this thing a lot. I don't know how many times, multiple, but it's extremely fast. This whole thing lasted two hours. That's the leak test portion lasted two hours. And we're gonna fit it into about a minute clip. So I want you guys to realize how slowly this thing is leaking. And we're gonna give you an exact number based on the last hour of the leak test. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna section it off here in just a second. We're gonna put one point at an hour back and one point at the very finish. We're gonna calculate how many microns per minute this thing leaked. And then what's more, I have some bonus information at the end that's gonna blow your damn socks off. Here we are at 159 at 144 microns. One hour and 59 minutes into the test. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide over and look what we are right there at the end. 157, 158 microns at three hours. So one hour later, it had lost 14 microns. That's a rate of 0.233 microns per minute. So what is the significance of all this crap we've been talking about? 0.23 microns, blah, 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 one hour, two hour test. What exactly does it mean? Well, here's what it means. The acceptable rate quoted by MeasureQuick during the last video was one micron per minute. That's an acceptable leakage in a system. And as you can see, 0.233 microns is almost one fifth of that, a little bit less than one fifth of that. So acceptable by far. So here's where it gets a little bit more interesting. I left everything hooked up to this coil overnight. I did this test around 9 p.m. I went live after that. A lot of you guys saw that. And then today it's 10 a.m., 13 hours later, and let's compare micron readings one more time. When I went up to the house last night, it was at 160 microns. Now I have it on my documentation right here. And when I came back today, it was 225. Now that's 13 hours later, it went up 65 microns. Now 13 hours is 780 minutes. So that is a leakage rate of 0 0.083 Three, 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 three. That is less than one tenth of the allowable rate, meaning it's roughly 12 times slower than the allowable rate. So by far acceptable. So this coil may not have been dehydrated the first go around, but once I left the vacuum pump on it for an extended period of time, we went below the vacuum target, which was 150, went down to 88 microns. We valved it off. And that dehydrated coil, even while leaking in two different spots, passed the test by far. Guys, this has been an interesting experiment, but I don't want to leave it like this. I don't want to say, hey, vacuum stuff can't be trusted. That's not the message of this at all. And I think that got confused along the way. I'm not saying blue vac sucks. I'm not saying measure quick sucks. I think measure quick already knows this, but a lot of guys see this as, hey, we can't trust these tools anymore. That's not true at all. I'm going to be honest with you. The blue vacuum app is probably the most surefire way to do any of this stuff. It looks like it's the closest way to get almost all of your vacuum information that you need so you can make the best possible decision. But I think that we're going to come up with maybe a solution or a best practice that we can use to take out that little unsure 1% that we've been testing here lately. What if you have a coil that leaks so slowly? It may not leak out refrigerant for two years, three years. So we just let it go. Or should we try to come up with a practice to try to catch those coils? That, that, see, that's the problem right there. Because how much effort are you going to put into something that leaks so slowly? But you know what? That's what we do here. So we're going to try to figure out how we can catch all those issues, maybe even leak detection or something like that to pair with a vacuum test. We'll see, guys. I hope you enjoyed the series. I pushed off the Flow Hood series till next week. We're going to be using the CPS Flow Hood and the DAFM3 vein anemometer from UEI do a little bit of comparison testing on the monstrosity I've built. And I think you guys are going to enjoy that. Hope you've enjoyed the vacuum test. Now let's get back to the show.